Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're doing acne safe makeup. I'm so excited. Um, but first off, welcome back, or if you're new here, welcome. My name is Celine, and I'm a certified esthetician and acne expert. And every single Thursday, I host a show called The Acne Chat, and we chat about all things related to acne. So today specifically, we are talking about Illuminaire brand liquid makeup. I know many of you love this stuff or are curious about it. It is a very unique style of makeup, and we'll get into that in a little bit, um, but it is a little bit tricky to work with at first, and there's also three different formulas. We have concealing, moisturizing, and mattifying, so we have a lot of choices to make. So we're gonna go through all of it today, and I'm gonna show you how to get really good full coverage using this makeup that's gonna last all day, and it won't give you breakouts. So first things first, before we dive into the makeup, we need to prime our skin. And I already did my full skincare routine. I put on a light moisturizer. My, my go-to lately has been Sorella Daily Greens. And then we're gonna put on our sunscreen. And today I'm going to use the Tizo AM Replenish. Um, this is a very silicone-y priming sunscreen, so it works really lovely under makeup. This is nice if you have oily combo skin. If you have drier skin, choose something like Sorella Quencher Protect. Both of these are silicone based, so they sit well under makeup, especially well under Illuminaire because Illuminaire is also a silicone based makeup. That plays well together. You wouldn't want to mix things that are oil based with silicone based. Um, even some water based products can be a little funny with silicone based. It just kind of depends. You have to play with it. But if you're using silicone base with silicone base, you're gonna be you're gonna be in good hands. It's gonna work out. So let's get some of this Tizo and replenish on my skin. Sorry, I have a mirror right here so I can see what I'm doing. So I might look away from the camera sometimes. So let's get our whoop, two fingers full. And this is enough for my face and neck. I really like this because like a silicone primer that you would buy from like somewhere like Sephora, this is going to be blurring and pore minimizing. It just really creates a very smooth, soft canvas for makeup. And this is even safe to go on your eyelids. So I like to softly go on my eyelids. I don't go right to the lash line, but right up on the top of my eyelids. It just has a very lightweight, moussey feel. It's really the best way to describe it. Probably getting it on my shirt, oh well. Okay, and while this dries down a little bit, let's go over the different formulas. So, I put my glasses back on, make sure I got it all rubbed in, and I did. So, let's, I'm gonna wipe the excess off my fingers. And let's jump into the three different formulas. So first starters, let's go with the thinnest formula. So first off, actually, the best way to think about this liquid mineral makeup is think of it as being a concentrate. It's literally like the concentrated version of your typical liquid foundation. Um, when you're working with this, it is a lot more concentrated, a little bit thicker, can be a little bit trickier to work with than some of your thinned out foundations that are out there on the market. So that's why so often we recommend mixing one of these formulas into a sunscreen or with a little bit of moisturizer. It just helps it make it easier to work with. Um, but if you kind of, once you get to know how to work with it, you can work with it straight. You don't necessarily have to dilute it, but just know a little bit goes a long way. I find that it really works best with your fingers most of the time because the warmth of your hands really helps disperse and press it into the skin. 
um, except for when I'm doing my main base, which I'll show you in a second. But with the concealing formula, using your fingers is key to really get that really natural coverage that doesn't look thick and doesn't look like it's sitting on top of your skin. So for starters, the two most popular formulas are the mattifying and the moisturizing. The biggest difference in these is the moisturizing is light to medium coverage, but it's buildable, so you could do very light coverage, you could build it up a little bit more. And it has more of a, um, it's not a dewy finish by any means, it's more of like a natural satiny finish. The mattifying is much thicker, a little harder to work with, but it has more coverage, medium to full coverage, and it's going to be mattifying and it has it longer lasting so it will last longer on your skin than the moisturizing because it just has more of that stick to it it really sticks to your skin the concealing formula on the other hand this one is also more of a natural finish natural satin finish um, but it is the most concentrated so a teeny tiny bit of this goes a very long way you could even mix a tiny bit of the concealing in with your moisturizing to up its coverage. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to mix the moisturizing with the teensy tiniest bit of the mattifying to give me a little bit more coverage and a little bit more lasting. So let's start with our foundation base here. Let's get going. So again I'm going to do my moisturizing. I'm using the color porcelain. I'm going to put a blop on the back of my hand. Then I'm taking the mattifying and the color Fair, which is just a little bit darker, and I'm putting the tiniest of little blops. It's hard to see, but another tiny, tiny little blop of it. And then I'm taking the Illuminaire flat top brush. Um, this one, I think we only have a couple left, and then it's back ordered from Illuminaire. So if you're looking for something similar, um, I also like using this brush from Spectrum Cosmetics. They're a really great brush company out of the UK. And you can get this one, it's A02. And they make the same brush, just with different color handles and things. I'm not sure if you can get this black one that I have, but they make the same brush in different colors. This is also a great little brush. It's just super, super smooth, flat and fairly dense so that you can get that good coverage. It's not just gonna gobble up all of your product. So I'm going to use the Illuminaire one today because I know some of you out there have this one. The Really the biggest difference of these is one is just a little bit bigger. So using the Illuminaire, I have my little mixture and I just kind of mix them up in the back of my hand a little bit. And then I'm going to start stippling it on. I'm just going to work with one side of my face first. I just find it easier. Sometimes I'll just go all over the face if I'm hurrying, but I feel like to show you guys, I'm going to kind of work at one side of the face at a time. So I'm just buffing this into the skin, blending down to the neck. This is a really good color match for me, so I don't have to worry about blending it that much down the neck. And I'm just working this into the skin. And this just glides on over that AM replenish sunscreen that we used. That's why I really like using it. It just works well. So that is one side of the face with mostly moisturizing formula with a little bit of mattifying mixed in. And this is with nothing. So we're starting to see some coverage here. I wouldn't call this full coverage yet, but we're going to get there with concealing formula. So let me finish my face. I know I'm very blind, so I do this with my glasses on, but you know, we do what we got to do. I actually need a little bit more, so I'm just going to mix a little bit more in the back of my hands. Air. Oh yeah? Alright, throw a question at me. Uh, Jessica wants to know what's the difference between Tizo AM and Tizo 3 for under makeup? Okay, so Tizo 3 is just a little bit more mattifying, a little less moisturizing. So AM Replenish I find you just have a little bit more moisture in it. 
um, a little bit less thick. It's a little bit thinner in texture. I just prefer it because it gives me a little bit of moisturization during the day. It has ceramides in it that help lock hydration into your skin. So it's just my personal preference, but Tizo 3 is better for folks who have very oily skin, who really want that smooth, matte, oil controlling base under their makeup. But both work lovely. They work really well with Illuminaire because they both have those nice silicone bases. And what shades are you using? I am using Portofino Porcelain in the moisturizing. That is my, my majority color. And then I just add a titch of Florentine Fair in the mattifying to add a little bit of warmth because I have a little bit of a tan right now because it's summertime. But when we go back to winter, I will probably not be using any Florentine Fair in my little concoction that I create for myself. I need a little more coverage up here. Okay, let's see how I'm doing. Oh yeah. Yep, this is starting to look really good. I've been using Illuminaire since I was in high school and I got all my friends hooked on it because it just makes your skin look glowy and healthy. And the longer you wear it, the more it just melts into the skin. So you'll find even if you first put it on, you're like, huh, I can kind of like see the makeup. It really melts in throughout the day something that I love about it. Okay, I think I am good. I think I blended that all. So this is my main base. Um, you can just powder and go from here, but I wanna show you how to use the concealing formula. So I'm just gonna use the um, Portofino Porcelain Shade of Concealing, because I'm really just going to be using it under my eyes and on a couple of little spots. So, this is the trick for using concealing. Start with a little. You can always add layers. So I'm going to take a tiny little bit on the back of my hand. I'm going to use clean fingers. Pick up a little bit. Just a little thin layer on my finger and then just pat it in where you want it. So I'm going to pat it in. I know I don't really have dark under eye circles to show you guys a big difference with, but I can still show you how I like to use it. And I also bring a thin layer of this up onto my eyelids to just to even out the coloring on my eyelids. It can be a nice little base for makeup. I'm going to do that now, bring it up to my eyelid. And just remember to keep it thin. If you've done this and it's immediately starting to crease up, that means you have too much. And this is what you're going to do. You're going to take a beauty blender and you're going to get it damp. I need to get this one damp. I'm going to mist it with my copper firming mist because I don't have a sink right next to me. But I'm damping up my beauty blender. And you're just gonna pull off excess product by just gently tapping. Just gently tap the area. This is gonna get excess product without pulling off too much coverage. And this is the trick to not creasing, is getting that thin layer of coverage and getting off the excess. So, I'm gonna put my glasses back on and I can show you guys. Make sure I blend in. So I'm, now I'm much brighter in this area. I've covered darkness, but it doesn't feel thick, it doesn't feel cakey, and it's probably not going to crease because I did my little trick. Um, some folks just are more prone to creasing under their eyes. If you have more lines under your eyes, that's just how it goes. And you can carry around a little makeup brush or like a little sponge in your purse and just pat out the creases as you go. It's really, it's kind of a individual thing. It depends on your eyes and how oily your eyes get. 
but this is just a hack that I learned along the way. Let's do the other eye now. So I have heard that people have tried applying the concealing formula with a sponge like this, um, but what they tell me is they end up using a lot more product because the sponge absorbs it. So we can kind of try it right now. I have not tried it because I like it with my fingers, but I'll show you what happens when we use the sponge. See, we might end up with less coverage because the sponge is picking up product. Let's see. I actually think that looks pretty good. I definitely picked up more product than I did on the other eye, but it still works. So you could potentially use a sponge, but know that you're gonna use a little bit more product. But honestly, I still have used like barely anything. Like this tube will last you an insanely long time. I'm gonna put a little bit more and use my finger. I just love the way the finger blends the color into the skin, because it's warm, you get that warmth. And then I'm gonna add a little more coverage where I need it. I have some recent breakout marks and I'm just gonna cover those with my finger. And then another trick, if you have fine lines or lines around your mouth where you feel like the foundation is settling, grab that beauty blender out again and just pat in those areas to make sure that you're not leaving a bunch of excess product there and that is what's gonna cause creasing around your mouth and if you're in your laugh lines. So I think I'm doing pretty good. I don't see anything else that I want to cover. So we're gonna get to the key point in this makeup lasting all day is setting it with powder. If you have dry skin, you probably don't need to do this step, but if you do get a little bit oily throughout the day or you find your makeup is moving around your face throughout the day and coming off, this is a key step. We're gonna take the Lily Lolo Flawless Silk Setting Powder. I like this one because it has a tiny bit of very finely milled um, like uh, luminescence to it. So I like it just keeps my skin looking glowy while still setting it. So it's like glowy rather than oily. But there is also a mattifying setting powder that you can choose as well if you want to stay more matte or maybe you just have very oily skin that you want to be in control of. But I'm going to use Flawless Silk. If you want to, you can kind of bake. And by doing that, you would be picking up powder with your sponge and just doing a little layer, letting it sit and then using a brush to wipe it away. But I like just using a powder brush. So this is the powder brush from Lily Lolo. Any loose, you just want it to be a loose bristle brush so that you don't pick up too much powder because if, if you put too much powder, that's when it's gonna get cakey and thick and you're not gonna like the end look. So starting with just a little bit of powder with Lily Lolo, some of you have heard this, I like to tap product out into the lid rather than sticking my brush straight into all the product. I just put some in the lid, then I can pick some up on my brush. Woo, I picked up a lot. And then if you pick up too much, just, you guys are probably, probably seeing plumes of powder go off into the air, but just smack off any extra and then brush it on the face. And this is gonna give me a nice thin layer of powder all over. If you want it to be more concentrated with your powder, just pick up a smaller brush. I do that all the time. I'll get a smaller brush and just, like if this was a tiny brush and I would just powder the T-zone, I get more concentrated amount in the T-zone. But today I want my whole face to last. I'm gonna get a good layer of powder all over. and this is gonna help our makeup last all day. If you do your layer of powder and you feel a little bit powdery, 
just know it's not gonna last. Your skin's gonna start absorbing it. But also, another hack that you can do is just take a makeup mist or a setting mist, even a skincare mist will do the trick, and mist with it, and that's gonna get rid of the powdery look. That just sets it all into the skin. It's just giving us that healthy, long-lasting makeup. My glasses back on. That is a really nice base. So obviously from here you can go on with bronzer, blush, highlighter, whatever you want to do. Um, eye makeup, all of that. Um, because we're here, I'm going to show you the Illuminaire blush real quick. The blush shades are associated with your foundation shade, um, but you can kind of play with it. So for example, I am mostly Portofino porcelain in my foundation shade, but I like the Florentine Fair blush because it's just a little bit darker. Um, each blush is actually the same base color. They just added the foundation to it. So the Florentine Fair blush is the same blush base, but they added the Florentine Fair makeup into it. So it really blends into the makeup perfectly and seamlessly so that it is a very natural look. A little bit goes a long way with this liquid blush. So I just put a little bit on my finger. Put it on both little fingers and then I just dot, 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 dot. Super easy. Take your flat top foundation brush or your fingers. You can do this with your fingers too. I just think it's easy with this brush. And just pat it right into the skin. Like so easy to blend in. You can obviously do less or more than I did. You can do another layer. If you want your blush to last all day, you can do this and then put the Lily Lolo powder blush on top. It's kind of like setting the liquid blush. That'll make it last longer. And boom, that is the Florentine Fair shade of the Illuminaire blush. I just think it just looks like your natural flush. It's a very easy blush to work with. It's not so pigmented that you're gonna accidentally like stain your face clown colors and be like struggling to blend it in. It's a very workable product. So any more questions, Ben? Yeah. Uh, Bella wants to know, can you use the concealing foundation for spot concealing? 100%. That is what I use today actually to conceal around my chin. It works really well for that. Just remember to work in thin layers. Cool. And Megan wants to know, do you have any recommendations for Acne Safe Lip Liner? Ooh, good question. Um, shoot, I don't. Um, let me research a little bit. Let me research a little bit. If you can, if you're on Instagram, you can message on Instagram or reach out to our live chat and say, hey, I was the one wondering about Acne Safe lip pencils and I'll kind of look out and see if I can find some for you. Um, I'm not a lip pencil user, unfortunately, so I don't have any that come to mind, but I will also check our Face Reality Facebook group. People are constantly talking about Acne Safe makeup options, so I'll do some digging for you and get back to you on that. And Ari wants to know if we offer samples of the MAC Illuminaire. So, unfortunately, Illuminaire stopped doing samples, and it's just, it's, it really is a bummer that they don't do sample packs anymore. So, unfortunately, we don't have samples of Illuminaire anymore, but we do have a very generous return policy. So, you can return anything within 30 days to us. So... If you want to try it, know that we do have that guarantee so that if it really doesn't work out for you, we've got your back, you can return it. Cool, yeah. They said they're worried about the limited shade options, mm -hmm. um, but it, it blends into multiple different skin Yes, skin. so they actually, this mineral makeup really adjusts to your skin tone. That's one of the reasons why they don't have that many tones, because especially as you sit over the course of 15 minutes, it really adjusts to your skin tone and blends into the skin. Um, that said, they need more shades. They really do. I 100% agree. It's something that we've been um, pushing them to do for a very long time. Um, hopefully, maybe they'll do that. We'll keep bugging them. 
um, but that is why I mix. So that's why I've got my moisturizing that I'm mixing with a little bit of the mattifying. It just always gives me that power to uh, make sure I'm getting that exact shade that I want. But I will say it really blends into the skin really well. It adjusts to your own undertones. Cool. And Jessica says, what about bronzer? Bronzer! Um, I didn't bring bronzer today, but I have a video from a couple weeks back. If you reach out to live chat, we can send you the link. A couple weeks back, we played with the bronzers from Lily Lolo. I love the bronzers from Lily Lolo. Um, there's a lighter shade um, called Waikiki that is like an illuminating bronzer. So it's like for all over glow and a little bit of warmth. Then there's South Beach is more of like your classic in the middle of the road bronzer. And then there's Bondi Bronze, which is a little bit deeper, but then has luminescence in it again. That is such a beautiful shade. I actually find that a lot of skin tones can use that shade, even though it's the darkest color. You just go light handed with it. Cool, and we have a question from Kimmy. Hi Kimmy, um, what color would you recommend for dark skin? For deeper skin tones, we the darkest shade they have is Tuscan Toast. That one also does really blend in with a lot of skin tones, but they need some darker shades, 100%. Um, it is something that we've been telling Illuminar for a long time. They need to get with the times and get more shades. So um, I would reach out to live chat, even if you can send a selfie, that is super helpful, and we can help you figure out if Tuscan Toast will work for you, which is their deepest shade. a couple more. Um, Jessica says, will the Face Reality Ultra Gentle Cleanser and a Lush Cloth be enough to remove Tizo 3 and a Luminary Matte Foundation? If you cleanse twice, yes. Do a double cleanse. Do your first cleanse, wash it off with that Lush Cloth, and then do a second cleanse, and that is plenty to remove all of this. Cool, and this is a good question. Bella says, can you please share the difference between Portofino Porcelain and Florentine Fair? Great question. Let's do that. And so, will you be getting the concealing foundation in Portofino Porcelain? That's a good question. Um, wait, Portofino Porcelain concealing. Oh, I think we just might be temporarily um, backordered on that one out of stock, but it is on the way. Um, yes, sorry, I was blanking. I thought you meant something else, but yes, sorry, this one is out of stock just for the moment, but it should be back in soon. I hate when that happens, but within the next few days, I think my um, lead in the shipping department, she said that we should have it by Friday. That's tomorrow, isn't it? That's Friday, so should be here tomorrow. Let me show you some swatches. Where's all my tubes? All right, this is my bag. Let's pull some swatches out of here. Okay. Something to think about with these that is very interesting that we learned over the course of many years of using this. The shades are ever so slightly different between formulas, even though they're the same color. And that is because of the difference in just how pigmented it is. Okay, I think that's everything. So, for example, the Fair in Moisturizing looks a little bit lighter in swatches than the Fair in Concealing because the concealing is so much more pigmented. So let's start with the Moisturizing formula. I'm going to show you Fair. I'll do a nice generous swatch. And porcelain. I'm sorry, I don't have all, I didn't bring all of the colors with me. I just brought my colors. So I can't do full swatches. But I will tell you that do it, getting full arm swatches of all of the shades onto our website is a priority for us. We do want to create that for you guys. So we have Pornofito Porcelain. Ooh. There. That's my shade. And then we have Florentine Fair, which is just a little bit warmer. Do I see that? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Then let me show you in the mattifying formula. So mattifying in Fair. says the 
swatch has helped so much. Thank you. Yay! It is interesting how the, the, you can, it's interesting how they adjust to your skin tone as they sit on your skin, but, whoa. Whoa, look at the difference there. So this is Florentine Fair and the Mattifying. This is Florentine Fair in, sorry, this is Portofino Porcelain and Mattifying. I had it backwards, oh my gosh, you guys. The mattifying is lighter than the moisturizing. What the heck? We are always learning new things. Florentine Fair in moisturizing is slightly darker and warmer than Florentine Fair in the mattifying. This is why we need swatches on our website. <laughs> we need to show these to you guys because it is not a perfect, um, match between formulas, which makes things difficult, which is another reason why Illuminaire needs to come back out with sample kits. But that was interesting. So there you guys have the swatches. This That's is lighting great. a fire. This is lighting a fire under me to get swatches on the website of all the formulas. So you can see the exact shades and how they look between concealing, moisturizing, and mattifying. Can we do a swatch of the concealer? Yes, let's do that too. Okay. See, we've got porcelain. Okay, oops, I did it backwards that I did it before, so that's confusing. But this is Florentine Fair in concealing and Porfino Porcelain in Concealing. Sorry, those are really squiggly little swatches, but. <laughs> Can you see that? Yeah. And if we mix them together, that is pretty dang close to my skin tone. And it's a lot of coverage, look at that. That is a lot of concealing formula. That is like way more than most people would ever use. But then you can kind of see how much coverage that gives. She's high coverage. Let me wipe that off. All right, what other questions do we have? Uh, Josephine, the knee writes in. Hey, Joseph. Um, hey, Joseph. AM Replenish Tinted SPF 40, why does it state AM and what about it helps with firming the skin? Ooh, good question. So the biggest differences between the AM Replenish and the Tizo sunscreens is that the AM Replenish, they added antioxidants. This has vitamin E and C and ceramides. So ceramides are an essential ingredient for your skin. They give that slip, they give that moisture. It is a natural part of your skin. And so having those ceramides is very replenishing in the morning. So it gives you some of those moisturizing, replenishing ingredients that you would find in like an antioxidant serum. And it puts them into the sunscreen. And the reason it's called AM Replenish is because it's sunscreen. So you don't need this at night. This is for during the day. And antioxidants are also an ingredient that we love for you guys to use in the morning. And that is why it is so nice that it is in here with the sunscreen. So that's a little bit about AM Replenish. Tizo 3, on the other hand, doesn't have the ceramides, but it does have vitamin C, and it is a bit more mattifying to the skin. Any other questions for me? Nope, we got them. Okay, so the makeup has really settled in. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but as you wear this, it just blends more and more into the skin. I find that it looks better and better throughout the course of the day as it kind of blends into my skin and the heat of my skin really just, it doesn't really absorb it by any means, but it just becomes a more cohesive look and it looks, it looks really good as the day wears on. I really love Illuminaire. If you guys have any more questions about it, how to use it, which shade is right for you, definitely reach out to our live chat. We love helping you. You can even take a quick selfie, send it to us, and we can color match you as well. 
but also keep an eye out. I am going to get swatches. Mark my word, I'm going to get some really in-depth swatches for all of you on the website of each of the formulas so that it is much easier to figure out which shade you want to buy in each formula. All right, everyone, if that is it, we're going to... One last question. Oh, okay, let's hear it. Um, Jessica says, if Florentine is too yellow for me in the moisturizing and concealing, should I get the porcelain in the matte? Ooh, that's a good question. She's um, light, medium, neutral. Hmm. So the mattifying isn't my favorite to use as your only formula. I feel like unless you have very oily skin, I just find that mattifying works best mixed in with one of the other formulas. So what I would probably recommend for you is to do what I like to do, which is mix the moisturizing in with the mattifying and getting a portofino and a fair. I would say, um, did she say the moisturizing and fair is too yellow? Um, yes, moisturizing and concealing. Interesting. Okay. I actually, I was noticing when we were doing those swatches, the mattifying was a lot less warm and less yellow. So I would say whichever one you're using more of, get it in the mattifying because that's the more neutral and then get the other shade in moisturizing, if that makes sense. So that whichever one you're using more of is the mattifying formula and then mixing in a little bit of the other one to add a little more lightness or darkness, depending on the color you're trying to achieve. Great. Perfect. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. This was so much fun. I love playing with makeup with everyone. If you wanted to see some more Lily Lolo blushes, bronzers, and highlighters, definitely go back and watch my last video. Um, we can send it to you as well if you reach out on live chat or on Instagram. We will just shoot you the link for that. But without further ado, we're going to go get tacos. My grandmother's in town, so I'm going to hang out with her. And I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful